I have two small daughters and they're gonna ask me, what did you do when the earth caught fire? We have a planet that really requires lower CO2 footprint ways of developing the same products that we have today. And I really think the only way we're gonna do it is through biology. And the only way for that to happen is that sort of every project suddenly costs five to $10 million and not 50 to $100 million. I'm Sophia Dolph, and today I'm catching up with Steph van Grieken, the co-founder and CEO of Cradle, a Swiss and Dutch startup that uses AI to make it easier and faster to design better proteins. Steph, it's great to see you. Welcome to Amsterdam. I know you're usually based in Zurich, and today you are in Amsterdam because here is where you have your lab. I'm excited for everyone to get a sense for what you're building behind the scenes today. Absolutely. Uh, this is the place where we test out our models and see if they work in reality and not just on the computer. Who are your customers and how are they using Cradle? So our customers are the research and development teams within uh, large pharmaceutical, chemical, food, material companies. And the way that they use Cradle is to accelerate their R&D. Everything from drugs to food to materials are you know, built on, on top of biology. The problem today, however, is uh, many of these products take a very long time to research and develop. And so in the case of pharmaceuticals, it's easily you know, five to 10 years and several hundreds of millions of dollars. And very similarly in food or in chemicals, it can be anywhere you know, from a couple of years to, uh, to 10 years uh, costing tens of millions of dollars. And so it's not for the, the faint of heart, and the success rates are very low. Uh, and so I think one of the things that's really exciting about uh, using AI for science uh, is that we can accelerate real R&D. Now I'm just talking about products that we already use today. We're not even thinking about what might be possible when a lot of these uh, R&D processes get cheaper and faster uh, so people can start building even more with biology. And so the researchers that use you today, how are they working with Cradle? If you're a researcher, you go through many rounds of experiments in order to bring your molecule to a point where you can use it as a therapeutic or as a detergent or as whatever the product is that you're trying to develop. And so inside every round, you kind of need to decide what is the sequences that I'm going to test the protein sequences. Now, to date, that's been a pretty dark art. So it's either a pretty random thing where people literally just flip bits in DNA and hope for the best, uh, or they you know, may know what the structure of a molecule look like and sort of use their specific knowledge to figure out where to make mutations. So in the past, you know, maybe 95% of the experiments that you do, they just don't work. So what Cradle does is really the workflow tool where you design what sequences should go in. Uh, and so what we're seeing with customers is a dramatic speed up from 1.2 up to even 10x faster going through a lot of their optimization processes. You could have been a pure software company but early on, you deliberately decided to also have your own in-house lab. Why did you decide to do that? Akin to when you're building a self-driving car company, you need to test, do my models actually work and are they getting better or not? And the only way that you can do that is in a laboratory. So what you can see behind me here is where we A-B test molecules every day in order to make our models a lot better the next day. What is the hardest part, would you say, about getting this technology right? I think actually building a founding team and generally a high performing team, biology is complicated in every modality that we work in, like in pharma, in food, in chemicals, in agriculture, you have very deep domain experts. Combined with machine learning, that really isn't that trivial, right? I think we're maybe we're already at 4.0 with GPT. For biology, we're still at GPT 0 0.5, right? And so you have to, first of all, find that talent. You have to convince them that they can actually build what you envision to build. And I remember some of our earliest conversations when we said, hey, we think we can make biology a bit more programmable. Y'all were a bit skeptical first too, right? Uh, and so bringing together that team of incredible designers, incredible biologists, incredible ML researchers, and then making sure that they can all work together and work on the same thing at the same time, that has been actually quite hard. But speaking of team, what I think a lot of people might not know about you is that before this, you were part of the Google research and machine learning team. What led you from Google to want to start Cradle? Uh, big problems in the world are human health and planetary health. And so on the human health side, there's only very few diseases that we can currently cure with drugs. Uh, and so being able to discover them faster, build better class 
molecules than are out there in the market today, I think is super valuable. But secondarily, you know, I have two small daughters and they're gonna ask me, what did you do when the earth caught fire? Uh, and so if you look at where biology is being applied today and where I think it will have a very bright future is in places where we currently use oil to develop chemicals or, you know, fabrics or food products. And, you know, uh, we have a planet that really requires lower CO2 footprint ways of developing the same products that we have today. And I really think the only way we're gonna do it is through biology. And the only way for that to happen is that sort of every project suddenly costs five to $10 million and not 50 to $100 million. I know you have a very big mission with Cradle. What's next for you? We could make food ingredients that we currently need cows for or chemicals for that you wouldn't otherwise uh, build. We could make sensors and diagnostics based on biology that are not out there in the market today. But I have a lot, a lot of, of excitement and trust in the creativity of the scientists out there.